Everybody sets goals. Either they write them down or they don't, they have them in their head. I'm gonna teach you how to achieve goals. I can show you how. If you are committed, I can show you how. One of the most important things that you can do for yourself is to create a vision for yourself. To who are you gonna be in five years? What does your life look like? You know, who's your partner? Who are your friends? Where do you live? Actually taking the time to think about the future in that way, it can really change your life. Because most people are just, they end up just being their circumstances. Oh, I'm here in the ghetto, or I'm here in Russia, or I'm here in this third world country, I will never get out. There's so many stories, as you know, as we all know, where people are able to create miraculous changes in their life once they really set out the vision for themselves of what they want to achieve. You know, just think of what, how can you make your life better and then the reverse engineer of the steps you need to take to get there. I looked at my life at 305 pounds, diagnosed with a brain tumor, pituitary tumor. I was sitting on a beach um, in Newport. I would just like wanted to go get away from anybody and I'll just sit there with my notebook trying to figure life out and I, I saw this screen. I closed my eyes and I saw this screen and it's like I'm watching my, my life movie. I'm like looking at my life and I'm like that movie is terrible. That can't be it. And I said the words, I said my story isn't over yet, comma. What was my dream before I started thinking about what was realistic in society, big houses or cars or businesses, what was my dream? And my dream was to be an athlete. So what I had to do was I had to create a new algorithm for my life and to, to create a new algorithm, it's like starting a new Instagram page. You gotta get rid of everything, you gotta unfollow everything and you've got to now tell the computers, the artificial intelligence that this is what I want you to bring into my life. Feed me this stuff. Feed me this. If you're committed, you will do whatever it takes. You'll let go of your stories. You'll let go of your excuses. You'll let go of all the reasons you currently have that are formulating your identity of yourself. And you'll learn how to let that go and become who you are destined to become. If you start in your mind first and you impress that through conscious efforts into the subconscious mind, it then causes thoughts and emotions and behaviors. I believe in the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. I study quantum physics. Is creating the new algorithm for my life was law of attraction. Okay, I'm going to get rid of everything first and foremost. I'm going to reinvent myself. I have to create a life built around me, a business that's built around me that's going to save my life. The more valid reasons you have to accomplish a dream, the higher the odds are that you will. I said, I'm going to do an Ironman in New Zealand in 10 months. I lost 130 pounds. I did that Ironman in New Zealand. Mm. I biked across America. And I said, I want to be a Nike athlete. That's how I'm gonna be a professional athlete. If I can be a Nike athlete, I can actually make this thing work. But none of their athletes are regular people. Mm. They're all these super high performance intense. And I'm like, I'm gonna be the one who's that common man, regular athlete. Mm. And I said, well, I believe in the law of attraction. If I wanna attract Nike into my life, well, what do Nike athletes have? They have commercials. I said, I need a commercial. I'm gonna make a commercial. And I titled it the same thing when I was on that beach. I said, my story isn't over yet. And we put it out. And three days later, Nike called me. And they said, we don't know who you are, but you have our entire campus in a frenzy. We have to get you up here. Fast forward a few months, I made a commercial called Dream Crazy. It was a fan-made Nike commercial, and I came up with this tagline about myself called Dream Crazy. I got a phone call a few weeks later. Nike said, we have a surprise for you. There's a big commercial we're working on with Colin Kaepernick, and we want you to be in it. As you follow your dream, it gets bigger 
And, and when it gets bigger, there are, there are more things that you're learning about it that you didn't know when you started. That in the beginning, the dream is just, you know, it's just very little and, and you can kind of see it. Yeah. So you go that way, but then it, begins, then it begins to expand. What stands between us and where we want to go is never what we think it is. It's not the economy, it's not the president, it's not that somebody already dominated the health food industry or dominated Facebook advertising or dominated TV advertising or there's no room left. It's never that. It's always the story we tell ourselves on why we can't achieve that. What is your biggest why? What's your biggest goal that you would love? If it was a year from now and we were sitting here, you're watching this, and it was a year later and it was the best year of your life, what would be the biggest thing that would have changed in your life? It, from money, income, family, love, intimacy, being a better dad, mom, whatever, whatever that is, if you say to yourself, I would love that goal, like I, I'd love to have my company doing a million dollars a year in net profit so I could have freedom for my family, then just say but. And whatever that but is, is usually your story. It's like, I would love my company to be doing a million dollars yet, but I live in a smaller town and there's just not enough people to do it. Or the internet's so saturated, there's no room to advertise on Facebook anymore because everybody and their brother's on. Whatever that story is, is usually your story and that's the results you get. Read a book a month, go to events, listen to cassette tapes back then of motivational stuff uh, for motivation, for inspiration, for strategies, for tactics of what to do to lift, raise your, your level of skill and knowledge. And on your way to work, you listen to those over and over and over and over and over again until you can recite every single one of them. So he taught me the power of repetition. He taught me the power of looking at stuff, touching stuff, feeling stuff, seeing stuff, hearing stuff, memorizing stuff. And at the time I was 19, I said, I mean, I felt this was ludicrous to me, right? This is like, what the hell am I doing here? It was like, it was, like, it was nuts. But that first year at 19, I made like 30 some odd thousand dollars, which was five grand more than my dad made as a cab driver. So I said, something's working. And I just kept doing it. I was too afraid not to. So I kept doing it. In the second year, I made $151,000, five times. Now in the second year, he started upgrading my knowledge and skills more. So he started to say, okay, instead of doing this now, now you're, you've graduated to doing this. And he taught me some upgraded skills. And so the combination of training my brain at a young age with beliefs that I wanted to have, he taught me the right habits to have, daily rituals, you know, for goal achievement versus goal setting. And he said, with repetition and emotion and consistency, initially it's hard and you have to use conscious effort to create the new beliefs. He says, but over 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, that new pattern that you're focusing on and paying attention to, your brain basically says, well, I guess you really don't need those old patterns. You keep activating these new ones. Let's just make these ones work and let's make these real. When we feel something, chances are that we're gonna release dopamine in the brain, the feel good uh, neurochemical that activates the reward center of the brain. And chances are if we feel that and we have this positive emotion around it and that neurochemistry is flooding our brain and our body with feel-good chemicals, we're actually activating the motivational center of the brain. And so when we visualize, when we set a goal, when we take an action step, when we emotionalize, when we read our goals, the initial flood of neurochemicals dopamine, serotonin, feel-good chemicals, and then if we share it with a friend, oxytocin, those three neurochemicals, those are the neurochemicals of goal achievement. If the set point's in the brain, and there's a psycho-cybernetic mechanism in the brain, a control and response mechanism in the brain, and it's our brain, why not learn how to reset the set point? So the harder part of the equation is, why am I not doing the things that I know I should be doing? And why am I not doing the things that I could find out easily how to do?